Hey guys, it's Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Today I wanted to talk to you about installing a Slade keypad deadbolt. I highly recommend these, they work really well. They do have touchscreen ones as well, but I like these ones because they have a physical button. Either way, depending which one you have, the installation instructions should be quite similar. I'll show you how to install it. I'll include a link in the video description below the video where you can find these for a really good price and I'll pass that along to you guys. Okay guys, so the doorknob that I recommend to go along with this deadbolt is just like a hall and closet one. You don't need a locking one since your deadbolt is doing a locking. And I'll link to where you can find these as well. See here where I have mine installed, so it's just a normal passage hall and closet doorknob. Alright guys, the first thing I like to do is check out this deadbolt part here, the latch part. So you can go ahead and remove the sticker, it just tells you that the latch has to be retracted during the whole installation process. So once you remove the sticker, the next thing is to determine what the length of your bore here is. What I mean by that is this here is adjustable. You can have it be shorter or you can have it be longer. There's two sizes that are standard for this. So what you do is you set it in the hole there and then you see if the black plastic part is centered in the hole, which is really close. This one's just a tad off center but if it was with the shorter one, you would definitely notice the difference. You can see in this one how obvious it is that that thing is off center. So I need the longer one in my situation. Now the other part that we need to be sure on this is this says top, so that has to be turned up. Then we'll attach that with two of the shorter screws. Next we're gonna install the keypad on the outside of the door. Now depending if your door is a left hand or a right hand swing, we're gonna have to turn this part here to line up with your deadbolt. So this part here has to go through the black part right there, so that will determine how you turn it. So this wire has to go up above. I'm close this just to show you the inside view, so you can see that part sticks through the black plastic part, and your wire and the other black part have to come through the top up above there. Next we're going to be putting this part on the inside. To do that we will need these two bolts right here. The wire from the outside has to come in this hole right here. So to show you here, we need to run this wire through this hole right here. And the other thing to mention, this one has to be up and down during this whole installation. Make sure to line that notch up if yours isn't. So as you're setting this together, make sure that comes through in the right spot. Make sure your wire's through the hole here. And then that black plastic part behind the wire tends to want to come right in that hole. And then these, I recommend that you start them by hand so they for sure line up. So you have to kind of wiggle the inside and outside maybe a little bit to get them lined up. Now I'd recommend starting this with a screwdriver first to make sure that they're going to go in. You don't want to strip them out. And then if you know that they're started good, you can use a screw gun if you want as well to put them in. I like just using a screwdriver because then you know exactly how much tension you're doing. And before you tighten this too much, what I would recommend doing is checking the outside to make sure that it's straight because this can move a little bit. Then check the inside make sure that it's straight, see how you can twist it a little bit. And then you can go ahead and tighten it down once you know that they're both straight. So put it on nice and snug, you don't want to over tighten it too bad, but you can put it on nice and snug. You can just go back and forth a little bit between the screws because it takes a little sometimes till they get seated properly. Now the next thing we want to do is connect these two wires together. There's only one way that it can go. So next you're going to want to put your 9 volt battery in that came with the doorknob. It'll make a beeping noise once you know that it's connected. Then you have to make sure that this wire is wrapped around here. You just set the battery in like that. If there's a little extra wire there, it'll be okay. You just kind of want to tuck it in there the best you can. So now we want to grab our cover. Make sure to turn the handle the right way so it'll go right on there. Because then you can test your latch if you want. And start your two screws in there. Now for this next part for installing this part, it might be a little tricky to show you this, but what I would recommend doing is closing your deadbolt and while you have it closed, look in there and see if it's centered in the hole as close as you can. So the reason I recommend checking that is this plate is a lot bigger than what your standard deadbolt is, so you're gonna have to carve this out with a chisel or something. And if your thing doesn't hit quite centered in the hole, you can tweak it one way or the other. So if it hits pretty much center in your hole, I would just center it based on your existing hole here. So then what I do is just hold this centered here and make a mark with your pencil, best you can to show what your new outline is gonna be but it would look like something like that. I made it centered for up and down, but I actually made it a little bit favored to the outside. I kind of kept the insides lined up. 
So now the other thing we gotta think about is this plate here. It's the same exact size. The reason I mention this is since we have these two plates together like this, we're gonna have to go extra deep with our carving right here when we carve that out because of this part sticking out. It's not just a single plate like this, it's extra thick. It's almost the size of three thickness wise. So the best thing that I found for this is a chisel. Depending what size you have, this is a one inch. But if you use a utility knife or something like that, you just don't have very much control over the blade. So that's why I recommend a chisel because you have a lot more control. So now I would recommend going a little bit outside of your pencil line just to give you a little extra room because it'll tend to get smaller as you go in deeper. So I would do this and then use a hammer and carefully pound away. So now that you've kind of chiseled around there the best you can, sometimes in the corners I hold it angled like this. You don't want to mess up the corners too bad. Now just a little bit at a time, and I wanted to tell you too, if you just want to use this single plate, that's up to you whether you want to use the single or the double. If you just want to use the single, that's about perfect now. We went a little bit extra big, but that's okay. When you paint it, you can take care of that. Nobody will really ever see it, but you don't want to have it too tight. So if you want to use the double one, then you got to go deeper. If you want to just use the single one, just leave it like that. Well, we're getting pretty deep with our chiseling here. It's usually going to take more than you think it probably will but you can kind of set it in there. Then you can check it with both of these and you can see I'm getting really close on this bottom part. The top part's still sticking out. So I'm gonna take a little more out of this top part. My recommendation is just take it a little bit at a time because like the saying goes, you can always take more off, but it's really hard to put it back. So just a little bit at a time and you can see, well, that's looking really good right there. So there you can see how my carving turned out. And like I said, you might get a little extra that you take off in the corners there, but nobody's gonna see it, it won't hurt anything. If you wanted to, if you're worried about it, my door is just primed yet, but you could put, if your door is painted white or something, you could put a little white paint around there, around the edges, nobody would ever see it. If you're gonna paint your door in the future, you're gonna pull these off anyways when you paint your door, so then you just paint the inside of that, and then you'll be all set. All right, the next step is to install this plate right here. And we have to turn it this way. This is the door stop side. I will warn you that these screws they send are very butter soft. So if you're not careful, they'll strip right out. But what I would recommend is holding these in here, kind of marking where center is so they get started correctly. So if for some reason these strip out on you, you can just use regular wood screws. I would recommend at least three inches and put them in there. Next, we'll put this plate on with the two little brown screws you have left. All right, let's see how our deadbolt works. So yeah, the next step then, once you got your door shut all the way, is to test this, make sure it's gonna work. And as long as it works, you're all set. So now in your instructions here, you got a programming code at the top there. It's a six digit code. You're gonna need that for programming. And you can read in here how to add user codes and delete user codes, but I'll show you really quick how to do it. So first, what you wanna do is put in your six digit programming code right there. Now once you're in that mode, you hit this slage button, and then you hit one to add a code. And then let's say I just wanna do zero, 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 zero. Do it once, and then once it blinks, you confirm it. So the way to test it then, do that. That's how you add a user code. So that's just to show you really quick. You can look in your manual, but that's just to show you really quick how to add a user code. One thing I wanted to mention really quick, you're supposed to hang on to this so you have your six digit code, but if you ever would lose it for some reason, under this front part right here, if you pull the doorknob all apart, there's a user code on the back side of this. You might've seen it during installation, but that's just in case you would ever forget your paperwork. All right guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. And remember, I'll link to anything that I think might be helpful to you below the video description. All right, thanks for watching guys.